I would like to thank the organizers of the International Conference on Mathematical Neuroscience for having selected our mini symposium as part of their scientific activities, allowing me to be here with you today. I also wish to acknowledge the support of our funding agencies and that of FAPESP to the Center of Research, Innovation and Dissemination in Neuromathematics. The title of this mini symposium is Learning and Compressing Stochastic Sequences of Events by the Brain. And I will make some opening remarks so as to contribute to this topic discussion. This talk is part of the activities developed within the research project called the Statistician Brain. According to this conjecture, acting as a statistician, the brain makes predictions about future events in order to interact efficiently in the world. The idea that the brain makes predictions so as to anticipate outcomes goes back to the pioneer work of Hermann von Helmholtz, a 19th century multi-scientist who introduced the notion of unconscious inference. Helmholtz conjectured that inferring about future events should be a crucial mechanism for learning and memory formation. Since then, it has been proposed that the brain assigns models to samples of stimuli. This idea has been called the Helmholtz heritage. This proposal gained notoriety in the 20th century through the work of eminent neuroscientists such as Marc Janerot. Janerot coined the term motor cognition to a conceptual framework encompassing the brain activity that associates to the production of movements, including pretended actions, imagined actions, prospective action judgment, action prediction and action observation, as well as action in dreams. Janerot called these states the mental simulation states or S states in which the brain actively simulates the motor execution and it, uh, its outcomes. Following, following Janerot's ideas, S states would allow us to learn, rehearse and predict actions. Today, we would like to go a step forward by asking, does the brain assign probabilistic models to sequence of stimuli so as to act in the world? Take, for instance, a sports person like Fabiana Müller, our Brazilian world champion in pole vault. As stated by Helmholtz, Janeiro, and others, she improved her fantastic skills by training and adjusting her models of the reality. Which kind of activity is evoked in our brain when we watch this incredibly skilled person performing movements? Can this brain activity be transformed into a mathematically treatable object? And how to approach this question experimentally? A typical solution to this problem in neuroscience is to employ simplified sequences of visual stimuli such as the one depicting a human walk. As shown in this picture, it is possible to put a marker in selected points of the body and then extract the relevant information that relates to the body movement. We then present to participants videos depicting these point lights while we record the brain signals employing an EEG machine. These EEG signals can be treated so that each recording site is considered as a node in a graph of interaction, depicted here in red points. And the vertices correspond to interactions between nodes. We then analyze the graphic matrix 
per node, such as distance, degree, etc. And we get very interesting results about how each node behaves in regard to their relatives during the point light display visualization. Note that there is an ever-changing activity across tri through timeline across the graph per participants, as depicted here for two repetitions of the same video. We can compare the graphs of activity retrieved during the visualization of biological versus scrambled motion, a condition in which the position of the point lights is interchanged, breaking down the form of a human body motion. Comparison of the graphs retrieved during the visualization of biological versus scrambled motion reveal statistical difference between these conditions. However, this approach precluded retrieving re from the recorded signal a signature corresponding to the employed stimuli. Let us now examine another experimental approach to tackle the question of if the brain assigned probabilistic models to stimuli so as to act in the world. Kilner and collaborators looked at the motor activation prior to the observation of a predicted movement. Subjects were asked to watch short videos presented in randomized order. They were told that whenever a green object appeared in the screen, there would be a grasping movement directed towards the object. Whereas each time a red object was presented, no movement would occur in the screen. There was also an execution condition that consisted in a button press. Kuhner and collaborators were searching for the equivalent of the famous readiness potential activity preceding a voluntary movement, coined by Kornhuber and Dick in 1964. This marker of motor preparation implies in the activation of a dense network of brain regions and occurs in anticipation of a voluntary movement as depicted here in this graph. Our expectation was that such activity would happen also in the movement observation condition. Results can be appreciated in this graph on the left. A big readiness potential is identified for, in black for the execution condition. So this is the activity preceding the, exec the movement execution. There is also a readiness potential for the green condition when the participants knew beforehand that there will be a movement occurring in the visual scene, indicating that the brain indeed prepares for an upcoming movement performed by others. Finally, no negative slope could be identified for the no movement condition. In a new version of this experiment, participants were invited to watch videos of three different conditions. No movement condition, a bowel movement condition where a bowel would go towards the hand, and a hand movement condition where the hand would, would go towards the ball. Here again, videos depicting left and right hand movements were presented to a participant in a randomized manner. EEG segments corresponding to the period preceding the beginning of the movement were recorded from target electrodes over the scalp, shown here in the top view. The electrodes of interest in the sensory motor cortex are depicted in red to the right and left sensory motor cortex. And those serving as, as controls were placed in the temporal cortex, as depicted in blue. We employed a hierarchical clustering analysis in which the EEG segments recorded for each condition were compared. These comparisons allowed to identify statistical difference across EEG segments per participants in the sensory motor cortex, contralateral and ipsilateral to the observed hand. 
For instance, this statistical approach showed that it was possible to discriminate between ball movement versus no movement in the contralateral sensory motor cortex in seven out of the nine participants when they viewed videos depicting images of the dominant hand. Interestingly, this difference of EEG activity was also retrieved for the sensor remoto cortex ipsilateral to the viewed hand. In short, results indicated the prevalence of a specific signature in the EEG signal associated to each of the tested conditions. So at this point, I would like to wrap up this uh, series of experiments um, by saying that specific signatures are associated to S states, action observation and action prediction. Uh, we, I have shown that graphs of interactions viewed from EEG signals evoked by point light displays depicting human movement departed from those depicting scrambled movement. I also show that specific EEG signatures were associated to upcoming hand, hand movements performed by others. And finally, uh, I have showed that these upcoming hand movement signatures were distinct from those evoked by upcoming tactile events directed to the hands. So it seems possible to identify specific signatures associated to the contents of an observed predicted movement from the EEG signal. So at this point, with the Neuromat team, we had some open questions. How to extract from brain signals the very structure of a sequence of events? How to establish a formal relationship between this sequence of events and the recorded signals? We wanted to devise a new experimental protocol in which we would provide to the brain a model containing information about the structure of the sequence of events while we recorded the EEG signals. We wanted a model that could be described mathematically. If the brain learned the structure of that sequence of events, it should be possible to retrieve this very structure from the recorded EEG signal. The chosen model was based on the work of Jorma Hissening, who proposed in 1983 a class of stochastic models capable of compressing any sequence of symbols generated by a source. Hissening introduced a new class of probabilistic models, namely the class of stochastic chains with memory of variable length, or context-free models. The mathematical formalism and the experimental approach employed in this work is described in this recent publication and will be explored in detail by Aline Duarte and Noslen Hernandez. Shortly, volunteers were exposed to sequences of auditory stimuli while they had their EEG signals recorded. Stimuli consisted in home, strong, weak, and missing hand claps. We employed two different context trees that were called ternary and quaternary. In the ternary sequence, a strong beat was followed by two weak beats. And in the quaternary, Besides, there was a constitutive silent unit separating the two weak beats. In both cases, eventually the weak beat, symbol one, could be replaced by a silent unit, introducing a variability in the sequence of events. Following Hissanen's proposal, these sequences can be represented by context trees. Given the present symbol, the context tree represents all the possible past sequences with respect to that present unit. The transition probabilities associated to each context is used to choose the type of auditory stimulus appearing after that context in the sequence of stimuli and are depicted here for the ternary and the quaternary context tree. As Noslen Hernandez will show, 
we opted to segment the EEG signals as a function of the context. For instance, in this figure, the context 112 and this corresponding EEG segment are depicted in purple, and the context 012 and this, its corresponding EEG segment in green. A new statistical analysis was developed to compare the law of the EEG segments as a function of their context. Employing this approach, we were able to retrieve the structure of probabilistic sequences of auditory stimuli from EEG data. So to wrap up at this point, I would like to state that an important step forward in the statistician brain conjecture is to establish a formal relationship between the structured sequence of random stimuli and the stochastic process associated to the brain processing of those stimuli. This was done by employing the functional data statistical selection procedure that will be described by Aline Duarte in the next talk of this mini symposium. Nosley Hernandez will then show results supporting the conjecture that the brain effectively identifies the context-free characterizing the source. Marcela Svark will then propose a new procedure of clustering this EEG dataset by law. Thank you for your attention.